Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're taking a look at a game in which you and a group of others have been bequeathed a vineyard, and if you are the one who brings it to prosperity the most, you get to keep the whole thing. We are talking about La Vina. So in the game, you're going to be moving your little worker around, you're going to be collecting cards of different grape varietals, and you are going to be putting them into your baskets. You'll also be collecting different combinations of those and then selling them for prestige. And you're trying to have the most prestige possible. If you do that, you are the winner of the game. And like I said, you get to keep and run the vineyard uh, for yourself. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the game works. As you can see, it's a fairly small box, but there's a good amount of gameplay in here. So let's cut to the table. I'll show you. We'll come on back after that and I'll give you some final thoughts. Here we're taking a look at the game for three players. We're going to set up the aisle based on the number of players. We're going to deal two cards to each side of these spaces. Uh, be aware that the spaces have two spots for the workers. And then every player gets their player card, some barrels, and a couple of starting baskets. This one can hold three cards. This one can hold two cards. And then uh, you'll set up over here some of the orders that could be completed in the game. You are largely ready to begin. The general flow of the game is the characters are going to be moving down this line, taking cards as they go, putting them in baskets, and when they finally come out of the other end, they will hopefully fulfill these orders and earn prestige. Most prestige at the end of the game is going to be uh, the, the player who does that is going to be the winner. So that's the general idea. So the rounds go like this. Whoever is farthest back is always the next player, and they can move ahead as far as they want to. Now, let's say the yellow player is here. Before or after you move, you may take one card. So a yellow player here could take this card, put it in a basket, then move ahead, let's say to there, or they could move ahead as far as they want to again, and then take a card, put it in a basket. There must be room for it, of course, and they can only take the top card. As you can see out here, there's a bunch of different varieties of grapes. And there are even some that are nothing at all, This, like this one. Some of them also show a tool in the corner. If you take that card, you are going to get the matching tool. There are three things. Shears, bill hooks, and then boots. And those each will do some special ability in the game. I'll touch on those a little bit later. And then it'll be the next player. So again, yellow will go, they'll take something. The red player will go, they can go anywhere they want to. Blue player might go and take a card. Then it'll be the red player again, because they are farther back. They'll move to there. Blue player might go uh, to there. Now the yellow player and, and every player here, when they move, they cannot simply move to the other spot in the same location. You have to move to an upcoming location. And the players will continue doing this until they come out of the end here. So let's say the, uh, red pl the yellow player is the first one to come out at the end. If you're the first one, you're going to get this little bonus wild grape. It's a value one of any of the varieties. You'll take that and then you might fulfill an order. So here's how these work. They are either mono varietal, meaning they only want one kind of thing like this one, and then they specify a value, they have spots for the barrels, and a number of prestige that you are going to earn. So let's say, for example, that I am the yellow player, I got this card in one of my baskets, and I was the one who got the wild uh, grape here at the end. I could, if I want to, I need a total of four or more for this one. I could then use this basket plus that wild to fill a barrel here. I'm going to take one of my own barrels, I'll put it in that spot, and I'll get my 11 prestige. Uh, from the victory points, which are very neat. They come in different sort of shapes, like a diploma, for example, is a 50 point, a bottle of wine is 10 points, and so on. Very neat tokens. And then that'll stay there marking that that's empty. I'm down one barrel. Game's going to be over when someone is fully out of barrels. And then some of them, instead of being monovarietal like that, you can mix your grapes. But you need to make sure that one kind of grape uh, makes up at least 50% of the uh, combination. So like this one, you can have different kinds. Uh, the total needs to be at least 11, 
but it will be worth 24 victory points. It's a little trickier. Here's another thing to be aware of. When you are making a sale like that, everything you are selling has to come from a single basket and everything in the basket must be part of the formula. You cannot mix and match what's going on in here. You can, at uh, any point during your turn, dump everything from one basket into the other one as long as that one can hold it, but you cannot still pass only one card over and keep something back. So managing how these work is very important. Once you are done coming out of the end over here, possibly selling something to one of these orders, then you may upgrade a basket as well. Uh, you'll pay some victory points and you'll upgrade. There are a couple of mediums and there are a couple of large baskets here uh, that you might upgrade, but you still will only ever have two of these at your disposal. Some of these cards, like this one, list an X in the amount you are selling. So any amount, this is mono varietal, and then down here, how many points you'll make. So again, back to our example, if it's four, and this says times two, I'll make eight prestige by selling to this one. Once that's done, everyone's come out, we will replenish all of these cards that are laid out. We are going to uh, do some upkeep, add a victory point to all of these cards that is not completely filled yet. And we are going to send all the characters back over here to the beginning and start a new round. There is one more card down here I want to point out, which is this one. This card will buy anything three times in the game. They don't care about the combination. They don't care about what cards are in it. But they only pay you half value for your cards. So if you dump cards worth 11 in here, you're only going to get five victory points. So you half, round it down, and you get five of those prestige, and then you put one of your barrels there. It is a good way, if you have a basket that's just not working out for you, to get something out of it, empty that basket, and uh, get rid of one of your barrels as well. So there is that available to you. So let's go back to the three tools I told you about. Let's say we've got ourselves uh, that, and the yellow player has a pair of boots, okay? So the boots are going to let you take a card from the space behind where you actually are. So the yellow player could take this card from behind where they are, and then they have to move. You always have to move, whether you take before or after. The bill hook lets you pull a card from under the top card. So again, same example, let's say we are there, I might move first, and then, or let's say I'll move to there, and then use my bill hook to take uh, the five, which is below the two, and put that there. And then finally the shears let me take two cards. So I'll take multiple cards and put them in baskets. You can even combine them, since you can have two, you could combine, for example, the bill hook and the boots would let me pull a card from under another that is behind me, combining the two powers here. And so you'll have little combinations like that that are also possible. That's general, that's, that's basically the general flow of the game. Continue doing these runs, gathering what you think you need, manage your tools, sell for the highest profit uh, possible, and then once the game is over, you are going to figure out prestige uh, totals. One final thing, as I said, you leave one single prestige on each of these uh, at the end of every round, every, as long as it's not fully filled. Whoever puts in the last barrel on any one of these is going to get all the prestige tokens that are sitting on it, and then that card is fully shut down, okay? They, they will no longer buy anything if there are, for example, three barrels on this one. So that's how that works. There you go. That's all there is to it. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of the game. All right, so there it is. That is La Vina. Let's go ahead and talk about this. Overall, I like this game quite a bit. It's a solid production. Again, packs a lot of game into a little box. That's not to say the game is perfect, of course, and there are a couple of things that I had issue with, but I'll touch on those when I get to them. We're going to start right at the top with thematic ties and the setting. The setting is lovely. I, I love the, uh, you know, the bright, beautiful, sunny setting. Uh, the whole thing is very warm and welcoming. The thematic ties, this idea of always pushing forward, of using your tools to your advantage, of selling to the best places for the most 
prestigious reward. Uh, all of these things are, really do come together to tell a good story and make a lot of sense thematically. There's a couple of things that I think are a little more restrictive than I would like, but I'll get to that a little bit in uh, ease of play. Next up, aesthetics. I love the look of this game. I think it is gorgeous. The, the cover is very nice, the packaging is very nice, but everything else, the artwork, the illustrations and all of the grapes, the tokens for victory points, our little, you know, ribbons and bottles and diplomas. I think that's a very beautiful touch. So thumbs up, big thumbs up in the aesthetics department. Replayability is very good. Uh, there's a uh, different of the goal cards, the cards you sell uh, grapes to. There are a bunch of those, so you only flip over a number of them. So that there will be some difference from game to game. Of course, there is also the card flip into the different lanes. And that's going to change, not just from game to game, but from round to round. So you have to adapt to all of this. That's going to lead to a nice amount of replayability, in my opinion. Uh, next up, game length. Here I have a small problem. The game is a little long. It does, it, it does um, take its time to reach a conclusion. There are things you do along the way, but I wouldn't necessarily say that the game has a particularly good arc. You know, you are not really doing anything tremendously different during the final round that, than what you are doing during the, the very first round. You'll earn tools, you'll spend them, you'll manage your baskets, you'll empty them. The only difference being if you chose to invest in those baskets, and if you do that, by the way, you're giving up some victory points to get a larger basket, then you'll have more room. That's the difference. That's really it. So yes, it's a little long. Uh, the ease of play also gets a little bit of a, of a ding from me, like I said, and that is because it can feel restrictive a little bit. The uh, tool combinations are a little tricky to remember. You know, every two tools do something together. And then just the basket management is a little more um, uh, problematic than, than what I would like. You know, you you got to sell everything in the basket. You cannot combine baskets, but then they tell you, but you can dump a basket into another one, uh, which I don't think I've ever done, but that rule is in there. So there's a lot of little rules, little things to manage, and um, I wish it was it was a slightly easier sort of level barrier to entry. But again, I'm nitpicking here. I do like this game a lot. Just pointing out some small things. By the way, uh, replayability of the game scales really well also. Forgot to mention that. I like it with two. You each player would control two characters, two little workers at two players, but it's very easy to manage. You still just move the one in the back, you know, and do something. And then lastly, tactics, strategy, luck, all of those things. There is not a ton of luck, because you do see every card that's out there at the beginning of a round. The only luck comes from um, player-driven you know, choices. Somebody else goes to a spot you meant to go to or were hoping to go to. You can do that. Oh, someone took the card you wanted. I don't, I don't consider that to be luck. That is um, just inherent turn order dilemmas that you are going to deal with. So it's not particularly lucky. There is a there are a bunch of tactics in the game, things you need to react to, but it, the game manages to make the players feel clever when you use a tool at just the right time to pull something off, or a combination of tools to pull something off. When you make that big uh, sale, when you are the one who sells the final barrel to some place and score a few bonus points from that, all those things do work well. And again. They, they make the players feel both engaged and uh, like they're doing tricky things. Like you are managing to pull a rabbit out of a hat, you know, a little bit. So overall, I do like the game. I think it's well done. I wish it was slightly shorter. And I wish it had some, uh, you know, uh, some simpler sort of logistical lines in a couple of spots. But other than that, lovely theme, fantastic look and a nice amount of replayability and strategy in a small package, which is th something I'm very thankful for. All right, so there it is. The bottom line is as follows. An attractive bouquet and legs to keep the game on the table make this worthy of a toast. This gets a seven out of 10 from me, which means it's going to get a seal of approval. 
Again, I recommend it if you are charmed by the theme, the artwork, or if you simply want a neat strategy game, set collection kind of game in a small portable package, then this one I think is going to be for you. That's La Vina. And that's it for me, everybody. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.